G'day folks, uh, this is the second video of a series of three. It's really important that you see the first video because it explains a lot of the background. Um, basically if you watch that video you'll see that with MPP Solar Gear, the PIP 5048, uh, sorry the PCM 5048 charge controllers and the PIP 4048 inverter solar charge controllers, we've been testing them for a year um, for a potential large scale rollout. Um, <clears throat> I believe that I was one of the very first people to get the PIP 4048, uh, probably about 14 months ago now. Uh, when I initially received it, uh, you'd turn it on and it would instantly go over the set point, uh, up, above, up over 60 volts and shut down. Then you'd have to reset it instantly, you know, well, not instantly, but when you're in the absorbed stage, basically it would be oscillating. That's just on its own. Uh, I didn't have the solar charge controllers in at that stage. They sent me through a firmware update and that seemed to fix that problem. Uh, I guess it was some sort of PID problem with the inverter. Um, <clears throat> roughly three months later, uh, I was sitting down in my office and uh, I saw the charge controller go up above the set point. Uh, it was a cloudy day. Um, cloud edge effect and I smelt that horrible smell of burning electronics and uh, the power went off. So I went out there and uh, took it apart, opened up the front and I found one of these caps which are the filter caps on the DC side of the inverter uh, was blown and lost all of its, well actually two of them had blown, uh, they'd lost all of their jism. So I emailed MPP Solar and uh, they said, does it look like there's any other damage in it? And I said, no, there doesn't. Okay, well, we'll send you some of these caps. That took a long time. I think it took about six weeks for me to get the caps. Uh, when I got them, I soldered them in. And we were all good for about another three months. And uh, then again, at lunchtime, batteries fully charged, late into the absorb stage, cloudy day, um, about 95% state of charge. Uh, cloud came over, cloud left, light came up, voltage came up, voltage went over the 60 volts as it does regularly. But this time, I smelt that horrible smell again. And this time we opened it up. I opened it up and the line of 16 MOSFETs on the DC side of the inverter were all blowing. They all tested blowing. They got me, they sent me a long list of, of um, tests to make on the inverter and I think basically they decided from that that it was too gone to uh, repair so they sent me another board. I was pointing out to them, guys, you know, this is happening with these over voltages that are occurring from the charge controllers and I believe that they're mostly created by the PCM5048 charge controllers. Um, they said, oh no, no, it's Ripple, it's your batteries. Um, again, implying that it's, it's created by the batteries. Um, I said, okay, radio. I said, look, I really think there's a problem with the PCM5048. So I, I think just replacing this is begging for it to blow up again in another three months time. So I waited for a month, got another one, installed it, and almost three months to the day later, it blew up too, in the same way, catastrophically, uh, again. This time it wasn't a cloudy day, this time it was, I'd come up, uh, I'd put a kettle on, and as soon as the kettle popped off, whoosh, voltage spiked up above 60 volts, uh, and I smelt and heard a bang in the inverter cabinet and sure enough again all those MOSFETs were blowing up. I rang MPP Solar, we were about roughly a month out of warranty so we were about 13 months in and uh, Eric said this is caused by too many inductive loads. Um, I said no it's caused by uh, these over voltages 
from the charge controllers. Oh, no, 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 it's definitely, this has got nothing to do with the DC side, this is the AC side. Uh, I sent him photos and I pointed out, look, this is the DC side of the circuit that's destroyed. This is the error. I went through and I showed him every time the same error had occurred uh, in the last month from the logs. And uh, every single time, it was on a cloudy day, we, I even gave him a spreadsheet uh, of the weather for each day. And uh, it was when the batteries were almost fully charged. And, uh, you know, very compelling. And it was always that same error, which was uh, DC bus over voltage. Uh, only this time, even though it occurs multiple times per month, this time, blowing up the inverter. As I suspected it probably would. Now, uh, they've denied a warranty claim. So they've told me basically I need to pay for another board. Uh, I don't think that's right. Uh, the, uh, clearly what they're saying that it's my fault, it's, invert it's uh, inductive loads, it's untrue. All this inverter is, um, uh, the, well, the inverter is basically uh, fused at 16 amps which works out at well less than the four kilowatts that the inverters are meant to put out. Uh, I don't see anywhere that says that inductive loads are not allowed. Uh, and apart from anything else, the AC side of the inverter board is fine. It's the DC side that's blowing up. So it's got nothing to do with the loads. It's got to do with over voltages, in my opinion. Do your own research. So. They've denied the warranty claim, so basically, once again, I'm left for months without an inverter. Uh, out of principle, I don't wish to uh, pay them more money because it's kind of like rewarding bad behaviour, I guess. And I don't believe that the problem's solved. So, basically, uh, an elect electrical engineer made of mine and I have got together. And um, we had a look at the, the bus capacitors. Now in inverter design, uh, basically the voltage of the capacitor should be double your bus voltage to allow for transients and ripple. These are rated at 63 volts. Your charge controller is generally going to, for AGM batteries, going to sit about 58.4 during absorb. So there is very, very little space there for any ripple. Um, there's very little overhead. Um, you know, what happens to capacitors when they've got very little overhead is they run hot. Um, especially when there's a lot of ripple going through them. Uh, these are rated at 105 degrees Celsius. Uh, the inverter typically is running at about 40 degrees Celsius, but that doesn't mean to say that there's not hot spots inside the capacitor. Generally the hot spots will build up and that's the temperature that matters. I believe that with all the extra ripple, uh, the temperature inside these capacitors is very high. I believe that they're failing. Interestingly enough, uh, these capacitors are only rated for 2,000 hours working life at uh, you know maximum ripple current at, in bad conditions. This is a, this is putting them under a lot of pressure. I believe um, the conditions that these guys are enduring. And interestingly enough, three months. Uh, roughly a hundred days, 24 hours a day, 2,400 hours, every three months they've been blowing up. So really, I believe that the inverters are working to their design. So I've got some really serious concerns about this. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I don't know whether I just throw it to the wind. I'm really hoping that Eric will come back, but at the moment, uh, You'll see in the next video, uh, I'm just getting nothing from them. They've gone completely quiet on me. This is not a good experience, especially considering the hundreds of emails and thousands of hours of work that I've tried in good faith to help them um, uh, with this design problem. Uh, they're not responding. They're not listening. Uh, so a warning to you people, a warning. If you could please uh, comment, write a comment, like, subscribe this video, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, it'll be worth getting it out to other people. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments too. Um, certainly with my other uh, 
my other friends that have got these inverters, they're really keen to learn um, from my experience and they're trying to make some design modifications to the inverter, i.e. Um, adding better capacitors, higher voltage capacitors with a higher ripple current uh, rating and a higher temperature rating. I think that should possibly help. Uh, yeah, real problem. This is my experience. Do your own research, uh, but this is what I've experienced. Okay, cheers.